Hi everyone! In this video, we are going to talk a little bit about R Markdown, and I have been using R Markdown for several years, and I used it to create exams, create homework, created group work. I even used it to create um presentations. So you can see this document. This is the website of R Markdown, and you can see it turn your analysis into high quality documents, reports, presentations, and dashboards. So I like it a lot because you can you can put your graphs, R code, and your、uh, wordings together in a very nice format. Put the file into a document. You are going to see a document in this example over here. It is like you can have some descriptions. You can have your R code chunk, and then you can ha even have the graph within the document, well organized. So the good thing about it is that you don't need to create a separate document and copying and pasting. The output, the graphs from your R Studio into that document. So you are actually、um, generating a full document all at once, and it is very well organized. I also want to mention there is actually a book on R Markdown. So if you want to look into the details about how to use it, you can check out this this book here. Um, and what we are going to do today is I'm going to show you an example because in this example we are going to work on a data set. We are going to write our code, and also we are going to have some graphs in the document. So we are going to generate a full document all at once using what we have here. And I'm going to copy everything. So this is a word document. I prepared it using R Markdown, and I'm going to copy this full document. And then I'm going to open up my R Studio、a、new file. Instead of choosing R Script, I'm going to click R Markdown. Go into a window like this. So you can name your document file. So you can you can make it like work on. Potato data, or you can even call it、um, like any name you would name a document. And the author, you can put your names in there, and you can actually generate、um, different documents of your choice. You can generate HTML, PDF, or even Word document. So I often generate a Word document if I'm not sure. Um, the generated document is in a good format. Format. So if I want to make changes after I generated the Word document, I, I can still do it. And if I'm confident, I will generate a PDF directly. I will not check again. Then I can generate the PDF directly. So once you have this, you can click OK. And then you are generating a document titled "Work on Potato Data." So if you are,、um, so this is a sample document that you can generate once you click our、um, create a new markdown. And these are samples like those are R code chunks, those are titles, and those are the wordings you have. So you can see if we need the file right now. Right. If we need it as a test file, and then it will be generated. You can see the name goes to the title on the top, and you can see it is work on potato data. The first title is R markdown, and the wordings, the R code, the R output, and including the plot. You can see the plot is included very well organized into the document. Then we have, if you are not familiar with it, you can just delete one thing at a time. So this is our work on、um, potato data, right? You, you can even change one thing at a time. This is just the description, and the description again, that's our code chunk. 
So if you are not familiar of those things, you can actually um, change that document into what you want. But since I have used it for a while, so I'm just going to copy and paste whatever I have there, here. And so this is the work on potato data. And I'm just going to leave what we have in the question. So it said a farmer is interested in the amount of ROT in potatoes that he grows. And he performs an experiment with three different bacteria levels and two different temperatures of soil. And we are going to use the data set called potatodata.csv. So I'm going to um, insert our code chunk and then I'm going to click import data set from text because I said it's a CSV file. And I'm going to find that CSV file and click open. So you can see the data we have is has a preview here. I just click return and this data set is imported. But the important thing here is because this is an outside document. So I'm going to copy the code in the console for importing the data set and into the R code chunk. But I will not copy view the document because we are generating a Word document. We are not opening a new window in our studio. So never put the view function in our, in our, in our markdown document because it will stop you from generating a document. So this is our step for import and outside document outside means it is not um, included in any of the R packages we are just using a CSV file and we are putting it into the document to use it so the first question I said here is to check the differences of ROT according to different bacteria levels in the soil so I'm going to leave a space after this paragraph and I, I'm going to type answer and what I often do is to use the stars, two stars each side and I'm going to, um, to type my answer for the question. So the correct model to use is one way or no one model because the response variable is ROT, which is a quantitative variable. And, and the the factor is bacteria levels which is stored in a categorical variable so that's our justification for what kind of model we are using and then please fit the model and name it as aov1 so what we can do here is to insert our code chunk and we are going to fit the model of AOV. But the first thing I want to do is I'm going to check the potato data variable names so that I don't accidentally use different like wrong variable names. So the model we are checking is ROT according to bacteria levels. And the data set we have is just the potato data. And it said name it as AOV1. So I'm going to call it AOV1. And then I'm going to run the summary of AOV1. So you can now you can click to run the whole R code chunk, what we have here, this chunk only. If you want to run one single line at a time, you can choose run selected lines. But I'm going to run the current code chunk so that I can define AOV1 before I run the summary of it. So from this result, we are seeing 
a very small p-value for the F test, which means the ROT, the average ROT is significantly different for different bacteria levels. And the second question is to check on the model conditions. So let's check on that conditions based on the R code chunk. So one thing we can do is to define our residues. So residues of AOV1. And the second thing we can do to check the normality of the residue. So we can do QQ norm of RES and then QQ line of RES. You may also check the histogram of RES if you want, but I prefer QQ plot because it's less subjective. And another thing you want to check is the constant variance or the equal variance condition. You want to have similar variabilities of different bacteria levels on the residue. So what we can do here, you can either draw a plot on the residue versus the potato data on bacteria. So you can either do, do this or like you can calculate, aggregate the RES on bacteria and then you can calculate the standard division of the residues according to each bacteria level and the data we are using is still the potato data. So you can run all these things to check conditions one at a time. So this one is name residues as the variable RES, histogram of RES, and this is a QQ plot for checking normality of RES. And this is a plot of RES according to bacteria levels. And this is a tool to calculate um, standard division of RES for each bacteria level. So those are the different things we can do for checking conditions. And this function is for calculating the standard deviation of the residues according to bacteria. So right now we can run the current R code chunk. So we can get all the results all at once. So the first graph is a histogram, looks fine. Normal QQ plot looks fine. Um, this is the bacteria level. And the variability of the residues for each bacteria level. And this is a plot for checking the conditions still on the equal variances condition. So we are calculating the standard deviation for each bacteria on their residues. And so my answer to that, this question would be for stars in the middle, I'm going to check type. I checked the normality of the residues. It looked the normality condition is satisfied. Um, I checked the equal variances conditions. Um, using the plot of residual versus um, bacteria as well as the largest standard division maximum of standard division over minimum of standard division so which is giving us the value 7.7 .7 over 4.2 and this value is smaller than 2. So we conclude that the conditions are satisfied. So we also have the conditions of independence but from this experiment we are not seeing any dependence in the, in the data collection. 
so we can we can we can comment on that in this answer saying the independence is also satisfied and that's our answer so um we can try to knit the file and see what is happening it's always good to try to knit the file and see if you are generating the right document as you want so this is just a preview so right now let's go to the document and see what we have by not looking at the preview because that document may not look good um, but we can always go to the document and see what we have generated so you can see this is the document that we generated um, it is work on potato data this is our importing the document it is shaded in gray and the first question our answer is bolded including some R code output here and our second question our answer is bolded and our plus are all included in here so you can see the plot is actually taking a lot of space because they are, we are only drawing one graph at a time. So one thing we can do is that we may generate the graphs all at once. So for generate two graphs or three graphs all in one picture, what we can do is we can type PAR and then we can type FMF row and then we can let it to be two by two. So in this way, we are actually trying to generate the graphs in one picture because we only have three graphs in this picture. So if even though I set it as two by two, we are only going to generate um, two graphs on the top and then one graph in the bottom so let's try to knit the document again so you can see here now the pictures are actually organized into one which is saving a lot of space and from this graph, you can still see the story, right? The histogram is still clear. The normal QQ plot is good. Even the potato data looks fine. And you can adjust your graphs by assigning the two and the two, the numbers in there. And one row with three pictures, you can just type one and three. So, but let me use two and two for now. Um, those are the the graphs we have i think this is about it like this this is the basics you need to actually use our markdown and it, you can also knit it into a pdf and on pdf you can see how well, well organized it is